I'm whistling <laughs> just like everybody else is. I love this. Hey, everybody. It's Charlie Grace with Charlie Grace Adventures. So happy you're here for our awesome Travel Talk Tuesday. We're going to do travel tips. We're going to talk about hot topics. We're going to talk about some really cool things and some headline news, things in the travel community, RV travel community too. I appreciate you guys being here. So if it's your first time watching, do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe and that bell to get notified. We put out some really cool things every week and uh, Travel Tip Tuesdays, it's the place to be. We've got a really cool community of people that come out and say, hey. And so let's take a look at some of those wonderful people today. There we go. Speaking of one, there we go. The Broken Nomad. Howdy, y'all. Glad you're here tonight. Hope everything's going well. Our friend, the Coffee Nut. Hello, all. Made it in time to grab your snack and drink, or drink and snacks. I got my drink. I'm ready. Water. Here we go, guys. This is the real cool. Where's the real star of the show? Um, Rosie's back there. That's my partner in crime. She is going to be meandering through the uh, lovely uh, event today. We're having some rain where I am right now. And so she's just like a cat in a hot tin roof, just a little like doesn't know what to do. Ever have a pet when you have those moments? We're going to talk about that just a little bit later. So uh, we'll get there too. And there's my buddy, Bree. Hey, Bree, how are you? Yeah, Rosie's going to take her nap now. This is great. My coworker, she's pretty, you know, hanging out with me. Got to love it. Uh, they're like, there she is. That's exactly right. There she is. Well, we've got lots of things to talk about. First off, we'll make sure everyone's good. You can say you're marked safe from that amazing eclipse. Everyone was so excited about the eclipse and what was going on. So uh, yeah, it was really cool. We're going to have a special guest who was a photographer a little later on, hopefully who can make it in. Um, they're going to be coming in just a little bit, but um, great, amazing show. I got to tell you, it was really cool to watch. And like I said, I hope you guys had a good time too. I was not in the path of totality. There were other people that were, and it was fine where I was. I got to tell you, I had a great time. The dog, we listen for crickets. We we listen to the birds and bunnies, and she was chasing everything in the background. Actually, cool part, I was live on Instagram with our good buddies uh, who do the Canadian van life community. And so they were up in Canada, and I was in Alabama, and we were talking back and forth about where it was. That was pretty cool. So it was really nice to sort of do that together on Instagram live. Really fun. Oh, gosh. Uh, oh, yeah. Bree's like, gentle, gentle tackle hug there, buddy. That's right. Um, I was evaporated by the eclipse. No, you weren't. You're here. <laughs> so we got some we got some hot topics to talk about, guys. So let's get to these hot topics and then we'll do some more catching up as we go through these. So uh, let's think about this. Where am I going to go? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Let's do let's do a headline because this is important. Here we go. OK, guys, did you know that one of the coolest things coming up uh, that we're excited about having? is National Park Week, Park Week. Now, if you don't know anything about National Park Week, now is the time to put it on your calendar, okay? Today is the 9th. This is coming up starting April 20th, okay? So if you love national parks like I love national parks, this is the time. Now, here's what they're gonna do. They've got lots of really cool things happening. And um, let's start with this. So Saturday, April 20th is a discovery, it's a discovery day. All the entrance fees for all the national parks are waived on April 20th. Huge. Of course, you know, Earth Day, all sorts of stuff. They're doing Earth Day celebration on April 21st. Um, but they're looking for lots of different things. There's a youth engagement day on April 25th. Uh, community connections, learn about the important work our programs and partners are doing in the communities across the country, uh, both within and outside our park board boundaries. Really cool stuff, guys. So there's more than 400 national parks. I want to know right now in the comments, how many national parks have you been to? Or what is your favorite national park? So if you're watching us live on Facebook, on, on YouTube, we're going on Twitch tonight too. So we're on three different places tonight. Let me know in the comments, what is your favorite national park? One of my favorite national parks, of course, is the Great Smoky Mountains. I love the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. And that's actually one of the most visited um, national parks in the country, truly just based upon its proximity to larger um, populations of people. So Yellowstone is very popular. I'm not saying it isn't, but national, the Great Smoky Mountains gets a lot of people. Plus, it's from a great place where uh, Dolly Parton's from. You know, it's a twofer. I love that one. Did my buddy Stanley McFalls, a Southern comedian, come in here? Yeah, what's up, friends? Hope you're having a fantastic Monday. Thank you so much for being here. Um, okay, Broken Numbers says, entry fees for all national parks, national seashores, are free for veterans and Gold Star parents. That is correct. Absolutely. But it is something that I'm going to drop this link. I'm going to put in the chat because I want you guys to have this. And uh, you can learn all about it and uh, find out more if you want to go. Because I think you really should uh, take the opportunity while you can. And get out there and, and check it out. So let's see. Stanley says he likes the Blue Ridge Parkway. Yes, so do I. Let me tell you what. If you've never been on the Blue Ridge Parkway, that should be on your list. 
Absolutely. Um, I'm probably going to be actually in that area, hopefully going to Asheville in May, Asheville, North Carolina. So can't wait to get up that way again. Bree says, uh, I frequent Mount Rainier National Park. Well, of course, you're in the fantastic area of Washington State. That's a great place to be there. Um, it's okay if you misspelled it. I got it. I'm telling you what, I can read sometimes. There's there's moments when I can actually read. Um, but yeah, so much fun. Really cool parks out there. I do have a couple special ones I'd like to go to. And uh, this will this be a really cool, cool opportunity to do that. So uh, Arch in the Park is on the 28th. So um, they're doing home. They're doing the past and present. Really cool thing where you you can they're doing art things. It's really neat. You just need to try that. And if you got a kiddo, Junior Ranger Day is April 27th. So lots of stuff for kiddos to do to get their Junior Ranger badge. And I love that. So um, Rosie, of course, has her Bark Ranger badge because she's cool like that. So she... <laughs> gotta love that. My dog has one. I don't have one. That's just the way we roll. I love this. So once again, drop that link in there from the National Parks. I think that's really important and uh, um, support them. You know, we, we pay taxes for them and uh, there's a lot of things that, that these parks need help with. So if we can do our, do our part, make sure that whatever you bring in, you bring out, make sure we're picking up our trash and we're not leaving things around because we want to make sure that there's um, more opportunities for more generations and other animals don't get hurt. Broken Gnome said, ooh, I, could I be a junior ranger? Uh, you have to be a junior to be a junior ranger. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Try again. You know, it's really cool though. It's a really cool thing. I'm, I'm super excited about it. Um, we're going to talk about a weather update really quick here, guys. All right. For those of us living in North America and for those of us who love um, a Ryan Hall, y'all, we got to talk about this because Ryan Hall, y'all is probably one of my favorite YouTubers when it comes to weather. And uh, whenever there's something going on, they're always with breaking news and talking about, you know, where it is, um, tornado, um, outbreaks, severe weather, things like that. And more importantly, even though the people in the um, uh, chat, because they'll do, they'll go live and they'll talk about exactly what's, what's going on. So if you don't know Ryan Hall, y'all right now, he's putting on live and I'm more than more than happy to uh, drop that link in the chat as well, because I want you guys to understand that he is an amazing resource and the community that he works with are also pretty cool. Let me, uh, let me share my screen because for those people who are in, here we go. Let me share it. For those people who are in the Texas area, I know they've been looking at a couple of these things going on. Um, I've got to figure out where he's, where he's looking at right now. Let me scroll back to the Waco. There we go. Just a little southwest of uh, Waco. I think Broken Newman knows exactly where this is. They've got some severe weather and tornado warnings going on down there. So uh, yeah, once again, love, love, love this channel. Cannot say enough great things about them. And uh, we'd love to promote them to make sure that you guys know how to stay safe while you're traveling out, out in the world. I know for a fact that last week, uh, when we had uh, tornado warnings, none of our warning systems, our National Weather Service was working in the area. For It was sort of strange. I was able to get uh, a warning on my AT&T device, but I wasn't able to get it on T-Mobile and no, none of the sirens went off. And we had a tornado literally 10 minutes away from us. So that's a little scary thing. So make sure you have lots of options. It's just one of those things, especially when you're traveling. So make sure you have like a hand crank device, you know, uh, some, you know, cell phone towers can go down, things happen. So make sure you have lots of, of things out there. So Stanley's like, yeah, he's got a cool channel. Absolutely. I love this guy. Yep. Uh, glad you're not there right now. I know. I know. Looks familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> Texas is sort of getting hit right now. So uh, please, everyone in, uh, in Texas, stay safe. But yeah. Be very, very careful about that. So I wanted to give you guys a heads up on that weather because everyone, when you travel, we're all checking up on our weather all the time. I mean, I've got my favorite apps. I'm looking at things, but sometimes you just need, you know, when you're traveling, you don't know what the local TV stations are. And most people don't watch TV anymore, right? We're always online. We're on our phones looking at things. So I wanted to bring that up as a tip for you guys today. All right. Um, next, let me think. What was the other? There was weather, hot topics. Oh, yeah. I forgot about this one. Here we go. Camper band news. Whoop, whoop. Okay. So while Rosie's napping back here, we've got some really cool things going on on, on the adventure van going on. We have made a massive order of stuff and I'm not a big stuff person. Remember I'm a minimalist. Don't want a lot of things. I get little things. I did get the, the cigar box guitar. I'm still working on that by the way, but, um, we are getting new racks for the back doors with a tire holder 
which means I'm getting a spare tire in of itself. I haven't had a spare tire in three years for this vehicle. I know, not exactly the smartest thing I've ever done, but I need a spare tire. And then it's also, I'm also getting a really big box. I'm getting a monster box. So really excited about uh, showing you guys all how this whole thing goes and what's going to happen because it's a really big deal. It is a, a pretty big undertaking. And what I'm trying to show you is that as you, if you do not build your own van, because a lot of people don't build their own van. They buy a van off the lot. They buy one off the lot, Winnebago, Coachman, Thor, whatever it might be. Even Fleetwood now has, an, has a, a van. Um, and you want to make it your own? You can buy these aftermarket things and make it really cool. But a lot of times you can't find them or you can't find someone to install them. I actually found someone to install them. So, um, you know, like our good friend, Jai's Journey, who has Midwest Van Builders, who we really appreciate and does a great job. She was mentioning last week. I mean, she's pretty much booked this year um, for big projects and things like that. So when you're looking for builders out there, I'm going to be really talking to a lot of builders in different places that are able to do small jobs as well as big jobs. And that's important. So uh, there'll be a lot more van tours. There'll be a lot more DIY builds that I get to show you. And I'm really, really excited about that. Let's see who jumped in here real quick. Um, let's see. Ryan Hall. Yeah, Ryan. There's Ryan's thing. I heard you hoard gold, go. We're not talking about goldfish. Okay. I have a small problem. It's okay. It is fantastic. I love me some goldfish. <laughs> By the gallon. But thank you for all the wonderful people who have sent me goldfish. I'm not saying they're going to waste. <laughs> they're really nice. Um, yeah, gotta love it. Gotta love it. Uh, while we're talking about being safe and all the other things, I do want to bring this up. There, Some people have asked me once again to go back and talk about dog travel tips. And I think it's time. Let's have that moment of zen. Here's our moment of zen. <music> Okay, they're so cute. I'm sorry. They're adorable. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Who doesn't love really traveling with a dog? Oh, here we go. Find out places to get high top, get high tops, please. High tops. Are you talking about high top tennis shoes? We'll have to figure that one out. Anyways, go moving on. Oops. Sorry about apps. Find out places to get apps. Hmm. We'll talk about that. Hold that, hold that, hold that thought, Rondaire. I'll, I'll come back to you. So traveling with pets. Just tried out something for the first time. It's called Zoomy Butter. Okay, you know how dogs have, um, you know, they go crazy. We'll call them crazies. They get zoomies. And they're like, oh, and they start running all over the place. And they just have a lot of energy pent up. And they really do need exercise. They really do need to go out and, and run that off and whatever. Sometimes they get in a point where it, they just they just need to calm down. Almost sort of like a small child that gets overworked up and can't calm down. So Zoomy Butter is one of my favorite things. And what I do is I just, I actually gave this one some Zoomy Butter before the show. And based upon their weight, um, all it has is a few little things. It's like peanut butter with additives in it. And I stick it in the fridge. So it gets a little harder, so like harder peanut butter. And I put it on a licking mat. And licking mats are fantastic. They're the silicone mats with like little different knobby things on them. You can spread it on there. And she, as she's licking it, it actually wears her out, quite honestly, and makes her tired. But it also makes her, it's very relaxing. So uh, Zoomy Butter, I'll leave a link in the description of this video. So if you guys are interest, interested in getting some, um, I think for a jar this big, it's about $13. And we've tried lots of different CBD treats and lots of different other things. But I've heard some really amazing things. I know that's really helped with Rosie in and travel anxiety and other things. So as I said, we're having a little bit of a rainstorm happening right now and she's okay. So I'll take it. Okay. Uh, it's raining Brie pretty heavy. Okay. So Ron, if uh, I, I think I'm going to go back to our, our Ryan Hall. So if you guys want to check that out and uh, Ron, if you want to uh, give a, a city and state where you are, um, I'm sure we can try to take a look at some of these things and figure out, make sure everybody is okay because that is important that we're all safe and sound. So yeah, yeah. Um, I use on my weather on my phone. Hold on a second here, guys. I use on my phone, uh, Storm Radar and AccuWeather, Climb and Radar Omega. I know it sounds a little weird. Um, Radar Omega is who Ryan Hall y'all uses. 
I agree with that one. It's a good one. Um, Storm Radar has really good predictive mapping. So it's all about the math. And I live next to a swirl, which is a severe weather Institute research lab. So we some, yeah, something like that. Um, swirl. It's a huge thing. It's really cool. I live in I live in the land of geeks. I live in Rocket City right now, and there's lots of things happening up here. But um, <laughs> Nomad says uh, I'm afraid of rain. Looking for a place to hide. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. It's those twisty things that you got to worry about. It's 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 one of those. You'll be fine. <laughs> so going back to the dogs. Zoomy butter. Got to try it out. Really love this. Oh, good. Storm's moving away from you now. Fantastic. Thanks for letting us know. We get worried about our friends. We want to make sure you guys are okay. Last week was a little scary over here, I'm telling you. Um, and we were sitting in the hallway on chairs. We had our bicycle helmets ready. We had everything put together. We had our little bug out bags just in case because you want to protect your head. Long sleeve shirts, lace up shoes. You know, you've got to be uh, thinking about those things. You don't want to have a short sleeve shirt on and have the walls come crumbling down on you. You want to protect yourself as, as best as possible. And if you're in a vehicle, you know, I watch these vehicles go sideways and things like that. So just please be careful and, and get to a, a real shelter as soon as possible. Don't stay in your vehicle. If you, if you can help it get to a much bigger, safer place. How's that? Rosie has no zoomies. Are you sure that butter is working right? Yeah, I know. Cause that's the point. It's called zoomie butter. It, it gets rid of them. It's fantastic. Love it. Love it. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's keep going guys. So we did uh camper band news. We're getting new things. Uh, puppy's doing okay. We have a new member. We have a new member that might actually come in as a guest tonight. So ooh, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, want to know from you guys, is there anything going on where you are? We know right now that, uh, um, Ron is dealing with some rain. How are things in your part of the world today? Is there something we need to know? Is there some hot topic that we need to talk about tonight um, other than weather? Because spring and weather, it's a thing. It's a real thing. I know I'm, I'm in tornado um, land. How about that lovely earthquake? I know the broken nomad was on the East Coast when there was an earthquake, in, I think, in New Jersey. <laughs> That's something that everybody's sort of like, a surprise. Um, that was one of those wonderful things. So, uh, yeah, it's been a little crazy on the weather front. A lot of things going on. I was asking about places to get... Um, fiberglass high tops installed. Hmm. Okay. Don't know the answer to that one. Apparently I'm getting a compliment on my hair tonight. Well, I'll take it. Thank you so much. Marvelous. Why? Thanks. I decided to, you know, brush it. Small things, small things like that. You know, no, nothing too big, nothing too exciting. Um, yeah. It's just one of those days. One of those days you just start looking at stuff and, and going through. We are going to do a uh, thank you because we have our mem our new membership out there right now. And uh, I always want to do one in the first 30 minutes or last 30 minutes so people know and can give our members a shout out. So let's give a good member shout out right now. Here we go. I'm loving, I'm loving this. Members are really cool. And I appreciate you guys so much because you're helping me to achieve my goals and getting more content out there and, and, and having all these really fun toys to, to entertain and work with you guys on. Um, our first big event, which we're opening up to the public, not just members, but everyone is going to be the YouTuber Jamboree in October, October 17th. Um, I think it's the 17th through the 20th. It's in, it's in Gaffney, South Carolina. If you're interested, I'll let you, I'll give you some more details. Um, I will put it in the description of the video, but it's also, you can go on Facebook and look up YouTube, YouTuber Jamboree. And uh, there'll be a bunch of YouTubers there and supporters, which is fun. So you don't have to be a YouTuber to go, but there'll be a lot of people there that you'll get to talk to and hang out with. I know um, RV Life with Adrian Ruth, Ruth will be there. And I think Adventure with Jeff and Tina will be there. Cindy and Booty will be there. There's a bunch of people coming and uh, really excited about that. It's um, one of those, like I call it, like old home weeks where all of our friends get together and hang out. So for those people who are more further south, who really don't go all the way up to Michigan for the Michigan meetup, this is the one that we tend to go to. It's really, really nice. So it's at the fall. Oh my gosh, the leaves. It's gorgeous. You got to go. It's a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of things happening when it comes to um, stuff going on, you know, as far as meetups and things like that. And I want to talk to you guys about that for a second, because there are, oh my gosh, Someone was asking me the other day, what's the next meetup? What's coming up? Where are you going to be? I said, well, it's going to be a, a toss up. So our next meetups, let's talk about.
about, doo -doo 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 -doo. here we go, here we go. I have to share this because it's just so much, guys. There's so many really cool things out there. Wow, it's hard to imagine. Let me share my screen. Um, Here we go. Meetups. Okay. Uh, April 9th, oops, let me go up to April. So the solar eclipse event already happened uh, for escapees. I saw some pictures. It looked amazing. Um, the next one is a big off-road expo in Springfield, Missouri. So if you like to go off-roading, this is a really cool thing. They've got classes you can attend, lots of really neat stuff. If you're in Arizona or Utah, they're also doing some cool things. The Weird Wild West is amazeballs. Um, if you, it's in Bisbee, Arizona. And I've always wanted to get out there. For some reason, it just doesn't work with my calendar this year. So um, yeah. And then Moab, Utah has the Overland Meetup. Um, it's, a, it's a big, it's a huge thing out there. But if you're in the Nashville area at the end of this month, there's the best of the Nashville hop. And what they do is they actually put you with all these other really cool RVers. And then they you get to get on a, a motor coach and they ride you downtown Nashville, which is sort of cool. So think about it. So you're, you're RVing one place and then they take you in a bus and drop you off downtown in Broadway, listen to some honky tonk music, hang out, have fun, all that kind of good stuff. Um, it's, it's a really good time. It's always a good time. So let me uh, drop that link in the chat for you guys so you guys can have that and uh, learn all about the really cool meetups that are going on. And if you're interested in those, there are links in on my website and you can just click on the link, make your reservations and go from there. Some of these are very nominal fees. Some of these are just, hey, come on out, you're boondocking and it's a couple hundred bucks. Others might be a little more expensive. So that's why you want to do a little research. Some meetups are, um, uh, some of these meetups are, are really big resorts. So some of these resorts can get a little on the pricey side, got to be careful. Let me go back to uh, what's coming up in May too. I'm thinking about it. So one of my favorite meetups is Camp Carpe Diem. It's happening in Hot Springs, Arkansas on May 16th through the 20th. I'm hoping to be there. I'm crossing my fingers I can get there. Um, it is bikes, uh, breweries, photography, really cool stuff. Lots of hiking and stuff like that. They do a great job. So uh, Camp Carpe Diem, if you want to go to something where I'm going to be in May, check it out and, uh, and go from there. Just lots of cool stuff. I'm telling you guys. There's so many things and, and people keep asking me, where are you going to go? Um, what, what plans do you have? I'll let you know. If you want to go there, we can hang out and see what, what's going on. Are you feeling okay? You're not moving your hands. <laughs> Am I moving my hands now? <laughs> Thanks, Ron. I know. I'm a little, uh, I'm a little in the allergy centric mode. Can I say that? Uh, allergies have hit full swing and the pollen is just ridiculous where I am. I mean, I, I washed or I don't say I washed my van, but I rinsed my van uh, two weeks in a row because when I went out, it was just covered and I mean covered in yellow. Um, it looked like someone had sprinkled chalk dust, like serious chalk dust. And when you walk outside and you come back in, you're a whole nother color. Yourself, your own person, you get covered in, in, in pollen. So my ears a little clogged. My nose are a little like, Ugh. it happens. It happens. It, it is what it is. Do I see fairy dust coming in here? Hey, how are you? Hope you're having a great night. Oh my gosh. Yes. Allergies are too much. I am a, it, it's a hard, it's a hard thing. So because I live in the Tennessee Valley right now and it's just all that pollen comes down there and you're like, oh my gosh, Zyrtec, Claritin, Sudafed. I don't care. Just bring it my way. We'll have to make it work. It's tough. I see Jason. Hey, Jason, thanks for being here. Hope you're having a great night, everybody. Always a good time. So yeah, so uh, that's really the, some of the big stuff that we're talking about tonight is uh, the hot topics of making sure that we are all safe due to weather. That's always a good one. And uh, seeing what we're going to be going going to next. All the cool meetups. It's happening. I'm telling you, it's time to break out that calendar. I am thinking that uh, next fall, actually the end of this uh, August and September, it's going to be Northeast. So I'm thinking about doing a whole trip to the Northeast. I'm going to be doing a uh, trip around maybe Lake Ontario or Lake Erie, go, going around Canada again, doing that kind of thing, going through New York and then hitting um, Van Nationals. So excited. Um, I think it's their 51st, 51st year for Van Nationals. So it's really cool. It's really awesome. I'll be going there and then uh, just start hitting the East Coast. I've had a goal to get to Maine since 2020 and I just haven't been able to get there. And I'm already up there when I go to Van Nationals. I think it's in Massachusetts. I'm just going to keep going. I'll just go up for a little bit 
and then start trickling down because then I've got to be in Hershey, Pennsylvania for the Hershey RV show. Uh, RV Women's National Conference will be in York, Pennsylvania, I think as well. And then uh, start trickling down to come down in time for October for the YouTuber Jamboree. Now for my members out there, I will say this. we got some huddles coming up. If you want to be part of a huddle, a huddle is a really special thing. It's sort of like just camping in a really small group, like, you know, five people or less. So you get, we get to hang out and do campfires and meetups and things like that. So I love, love, love to hang out with my members. So if you want to become a member, that's sort of the cool stuff you get is, you know, we get to do the camping huddles together. I want to make sure that we keep it small because that way we get to spend time and hang out and, you know, trade stories and all that kind of stuff. It's just a lot more fun. There's some of these really big meetups. It's hard. It's just hard to see everybody and hard to talk to everybody and, uh, you know, getting Rosie happy and everything else. And um, I'm going to be uh, one of the bigger meetups. I will be at the Adventure Bandits Bash or no, I'm sorry, the Glamp Out, the Glamp Out in Ohio in June. And they're wonderful people. And I'm going to be hosting like sub hosting. I'll call it the, the van life section over on this little peninsula. It's almost like an island in itself, but I'll be doing like the, I think it's Thursday or Friday. I'm doing the big bonfire and cookies and s'mores and stuff, but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited about that. So um, that, us van lifers sort of get pushed aside because we're not in a, in a big RV or something like that. And uh, we just have a different way of traveling. It's just, it's, it's just different because we just keep going. Uh, yeah. I wonder if Lance is catching a bather. Uh, probably. I mean, I hate to say it. That's pretty, that's, I know that they're down there in Texas. There was a big meetup this week, this weekend. So, uh, I'm, I'm glad I'm honestly, I'm glad I'm not there for so many reasons. I'm glad I am. I'm staying dry as best I can and not in a tornado. So hope everybody does, does, uh, does okay down there though. Um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be tough. Absolutely tough. So what else do I have to tell you? Because there really wasn't a huge amount of news other than, you know, for those of you guys who've been watching the RV Unplugged, that's really cool, keeping in touch with that. I know the big uh, Alliance RV rally was this past week, and we I knew some people that were there, and I heard some really good things happening at the rally there. And uh, yeah, yeah, pretty darn cool. Pretty awesome. Do you guys have any questions? Because I realize I haven't been asking you if you have any questions and I need to ask you, what are your questions tonight? Make them a good one, guys. Have some fun. There we go. Here we go. Oh, I heard you got new batteries. Hmm. That would be correct, sir. <laughs> um, who says you can't get, how, who says you can't retrofit a bought RV that doesn't have lithium to have lithium? I have learned that lesson and I've gotten a lot of help from friends on this and I don't want to take all the credit because it's definitely not on me. But if you've ever heard of SOK batteries, um, SOK batteries are, if I'm saying that right, make sure I got this right here. There we go. Um, it's a, it's a company. It's, it's SOK battery USA. It's actually out of, Gal out of California and they have really cool batteries. And I was lucky enough to um, uh, get two of these that actually fit within my RV. So, you know, when I bought my pre-made, my pre-made uh, has a carriage underneath the van itself that holds these batteries, these AGMs. And so we measured them really carefully and thought, okay, how can I upgrade and get better energy system? Now, granted, I, I just got to tell you right now, it's a fantastic system with AGMs as long as you only use them to half their power and you don't boondock a lot. If you're a person who's going to plug in all the time, totally fine. Nothing wrong with, with having AGMs. If you're a person who likes to boondock, you're going to need some better power. You're going to need to look at some options. So for me, I want to say I stair-stepped this a little bit. So AGMs were fine. I plugged in a lot. And then I started to not plug in a lot. <laughs> and so I was like, huh. Then I watched my AGMs sort of die and not in a good way. Now, I have a, I have a solar panel that can, I can charge them. But once they go down to 50%, they never go back up. They never go back up. And that was a real problem for me. Do I have a generator? Yes. But a lot of places I was going to didn't allow a generator to be on during the times that I actually needed the generator. So started to go in a different route. So started to have a portable Blue Eddy, which is fantastic. And I love Blue Eddies and they're great, but they are space big things. And that means it has to be in my van, not outside my van. And I had to think about different things. So I've been using a Blue Eddy. I've had a, I have a 2000 watt uh, Blue Eddy, which is fan 
fantastic. I have nothing bad to say about Blue, Eddy, Blue Eddies. It's been amazing. Um, and I've used it to charge, you know, my, my laptop and my phone and, and uh, battery operated fans and tons and tons of stuff. Matter of fact, I've even used it to put on my little portable Walmart heater at times when I needed it and it ran fan. Just, I can't say enough about it. But once again, I still really need more energy. So had the opportunity, had it measured underneath my carriage and then found two uh, SOK batteries that worked in that space, bought them, had them professionally installed. This was important. I'm not an electrician, never going to pretend to be one. Had them professionally installed at an RV service center and then um, had them tested. So, and there, I have a little uh, app on my phone that says exactly where they are and what's going on. They're being charged and what their, what their um, capacity is. So love, love, love SOK batteries. I will be doing a review on it, but just to let you guys know, it's pretty cool. I'm hoping I can get a discount code for you guys so that you can get a discount on these. They are a little pricey, but they're worth it. I mean, they, they just have more, um, more juice than some of the other battery companies. All right, I've got a question here from Fairy Dust. Uh, so I understand you pretty much stay out, of the e stay out in the East, but any plans to come out West? Why, yes, I do. <laughs> I really want to go to Banff. It's on my list. Um, I've been trying to go. I wanted to come to Oregon meetup. Honestly, that was on my list. I wanted to figure out how to do that in June. I just don't think I can get out there in time because by the time I get out there, I want to stay out there because there's so many things that I want to see on the West Coast. So I've been to the West Coast, or West Coast before, but I haven't done the Pacific Northwest. And one of my really, really good friends is from Oregon and she's a um, singer songwriter and she's actually on tour right now. And I was hoping maybe one of these days I could sort of follow her a little bit or at least meet up with her in certain places. I think she's in Texas right now, but um, that would be really cool. I would love to do that. So it's, it's on my list. I promise I'm coming out that way. I just don't know when yet. Giant Laney, I'm a little late tonight. I just got back from a motorcycle ride. Oh, nice. Very cool. It must be nice weather then. I'll take that. Very jealous. Really jealous on that one. Um, Broken Noman says, they're half the price of Battleborn batteries. I kind of wish I got the SOKs. Well, here's the deal. Battleborns are still really good batteries. And they've got really great service if something's wrong. So I don't like to say one battery is better than another. It just depends on the situation and what's going on. And technology always changes. We know this. I always say when you're going to buy something, get the top of the line because it'll be the bottom of the line very soon. <laughs> it happens really fast. Remember that really expensive digital watch we all wanted back in the day that just lit up that we thought was so cool or had a calculator on our wrist? Yeah, those things happen. It sort of is what it is. I love that. Anyways, um, giant light, hoping you weren't riding naked. <laughs> I think he was, I'm sure he was uh, protected. I'm sure he was a protected rider. Helmet, things like that. Oh, yeah. I love that. Jeez, guys, you're killing me. Really? We're thinking, oh, I wouldn't even go there. All right. Whoops. I lost it. Back. Back. Comments. There we are. Um, sounds great. CG. I too been waiting to travel out east. I'm telling you, it's, there's pros and cons. There's just pros and cons. Um, I have so much I haven't seen the east coast still. That's why I really want to do the northeast section. That's really on my list. And once I do that, I can say I pretty much I don't say I've done it all, but I've pretty much been to all the states east of Mississippi. That was one of my goals. I just want to go to all the states east of Mississippi, see some cool things. But I've got to take a three to four month trip when I go west of the Mississippi because I'll have to like do it in sections. I'll maybe like do the southeast section, maybe do the northeast section, maybe do like the Dakotas. And, you know, just depending on how I'm going to do this out because there's really, really cool things. And one of my former guests that I had here on the show, of course, that wrote this awesome book called USA RV Adventures, 25 Epic Routes. It's by Bonnie and Grant Sinclair, who did a fantastic job, by the way. I love this. Um, I've been reading their book again, and they've got some really great ideas of places to go and when to go there. So I want to make sure um, I'm more of a shoulder season kind of gal. I don't like to be there during the crowds, but like right before the crowds get there, if you know what I mean. So I don't mind wearing a jacket. Don't really like it when it's a thousand degrees outside and uh, not a big fan of bugs, you know, just personally speaking one of my things. So, uh, so yeah, this is really, really fantastic book. Um, you can find them on Amazon. It's called USA uh, RV adventures, 25 epic routes. I think they did it. I, I, the more I look at this thing, the more I'm like, yeah, they even talk about road conditions and, and, and possible fuel, how much the fuel will be or, or where you need to stop. Um, how many miles it's going to take and how long it's going to take you to get there. So like the arches is on my list. I have not been on the arches. <gasps> Do I see my friend Lucretia? Hey, Lucretia, thanks for being here. Hope you're having a great night. 
That's so cool. I've also got a few things locally I need to do. I, every time I turn around, I'm like, I want to hit the North Alabama Mural Trail. I love murals. If you've been watching some of my, uh, my shorts, you'll notice that I actually went and found the mural for um, Little Richard. And Little Richard's actually buried in Huntsville at the Oakwood uh, uh, College. And Oakwood College is a Seventh-day Adventist school, but he went there for a little bit for seminary. And of course, we all know Little Richard, um, you know, Tutti Fruity, all the good stuff. He's got a great, he's got so many songs, so many songs to his credit. But um, yeah, I just love, I love checking out local art. I love finding some things and then talking about it and giving those artists the credit because that's a huge, that's a lot of work. That is so much work. Oh my gosh. Well, I think I might have a guest in a few seconds here. So I want to make sure you guys are good. But you know what we have to do before that? We have to do a giveaway. Oh, it's giveaway time already. What? It happened so quickly. Here we go, guys. Okay. So I am going to make a simple word. I'm going to call sun because we've had the eclipse. We're going to be talking about the eclipse anyways. So let me do that. So if you can type the word sun in the chat, uh, we're going to be giving away something really cool. And I'm going to show you what it is. Are you ready? I'll have to, maybe I should, let me stop sharing for one second. Here we go. This is the official. The only way you can get this is if you win on my live stream or meet me in person. So here we go, guys. It is the official every day's an adventure hat. Oh yeah, buddy. Look at that. It's a leather patch. It's a dad hat. It's got a nice buckle on the back. Okay. Not skimping on you guys, giving you the good stuff here. Good stuff. It's a great hat. I love this hat. So it comes in navy blue. So um, anyways, you can win them on the show. Love these things. But you got to write, uh, you got to write the number. What's the uh, sun? Sun is what we're doing. If you write sun in the chat. Now remember, it's sun. Not fun. Not gun. It's got to be sun. <laughs> right? Type sun and we're going to draw, draw it at random. And uh, we'll see who wins, which is always fun. And I just, last week's winner was Naj. And Naj won, which is very cool. And I got that out. And actually, she got some more, more than just a hat. Because I like to put such special surprises on these things. And you don't know what you're going to get in the box. Because I am I am hand packing these things, guys. They are not coming from any other place. They're coming straight from me in the box that I tape horribly together. Um, but yeah. At, yeah, those hats are awesome. You should know you won one. Actually, you won two. That's right. You have no re You can't win another, buddy. Sorry. You're good. No guns. No fun. I love this. Lucretia's like, nice. I'm like, yeah, they're really cool. Yeah. Sun. No, there we go. Yep. There we go. And I do ship to Canada. I've been shipping these to Canada. So uh, for my Canadian friends, don't worry. I will absolutely get it to you. I love this. Love this. Oh, your mom saw Little Richard. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, what, I, I have a Little Richard story. I actually saw him. <laughs> I think he was yeah, he was riding in a cal an old Cadillac, a beautiful old Cadillac, downtown Nashville. And he was yelling out the out the window. He, you know, you can't mistake that voice. It's a pretty distinctive voice. And uh, I think he yelled, he goes, he goes, hey, red. I'm like, oh geez. <laughs> there you go. Yep. There's Keely or Keela. Keela. I always want to say Keely. We have a, a friend that's a Keely. Keela. Or Kayla. Kayla. We'll go with Kayla. And she's like, hey, Kevin. Okay, guys, let's draw this. Let's have some fun. Let's see who's going to win. Who is going to win today? Here we go. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? I'm so excited. I love this. Oh, Lucretia, even better. Oh, my gosh. You are fantastic. I love this. Okay, so Lucretia, here's the deal. First off, all you got to do is email me, contact at charliegraceadventures.com and uh, just do it now. Just do it real quick and send me a message. Give me your first and last name that you want mailed to and an address and we'll get that in the mail. We'll get that out for you. And maybe like a little special surprise in there too. Always fun. Yay. Congratulations. That is so cool. I, mean, I love, I love winning. This is fun. Everyone's like saying, congratulations. She's like, oh my gosh, I won. Yes, you did win because you're cool like that and you deserve to win. Absolutely. Congratulations. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, thanks for saying it right, Charlie. Yeah, I'll get there. I swear I will. As long as you don't call me Chuck, we'll be okay. <laughs> I love this. All righty. Stanley's like, yay. All right. It is time now. It is time to bring on a friend. Here we go. <laughs> okay. I have a friend who is phenomenal and I have so many great things to say about this person. You have no idea, but more importantly, are you ready? He's a little different. So let's just all bear with him. 
it's my friend Gary Rice. <laughs> Hi, can you see me? Uh, can you? I, I barely. What, what do you have on your eyes there, Gary? What's going I, I on? I can't see you. These are eclipse safe glasses that I just got from Carbondale Southern Illinois University, where I was there to see the eclipse. Nice, very cool. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask some really dumb questions, but why okay. were you there? Uh, to see the eclipse. <laughs> well, okay. So I um, I went to I went there in 1985. Um, mm -hmm. So it was kind of a nostalgic return, but it just happened to coincide with the eclipse. So I timed it out so I could be at my alma mater and see something amazing. Well, that's it's perfect timing. I, I think it's perfect timing. I'm going to drop your link for your Instagram in the chat. Uh, Gary does not have a YouTube channel. He is an amazing photographer. And I'm going to talk about how we met because this is fun. This is a great story. In, in typical Charlie Grace fashion, um, I was at one of these meetups. We were actually at Van Fest, um, which was in outside of Cocoa Beach, mm -hmm. and uh, looking and walking around, looking at awesome vans. And I saw Gary with a, with a camera, and I'm like, "Oh, you know, I understand photography." I thought, "Let's do something really fun." And I said, "Hey, take, I'm going to run and jump. Can you take my picture?" And that's exactly what I did. I ran and jumped jumped in front of a van, and you went click click click, and the rest is history. <laughs> I, I think the line was more like, let's see if you can actually do this. Put me on the spot. The challenge was set, and uh, I guess I pulled it off. We're still friends. We're still friends, though. And, and he did a great job. He did a great job. I love this. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this because I, first off, huge photography fan. You have a great page. Um, I love, love, love your work. And the fact that you did, we actually, we, we did three <laughs> three meetups in two months. We ended up being exactly. a totally by coincidence. Totally by yep. coincidence. This is yep. fun. So Van Fest and then went to uh Peace Love and Vans and then ended yep. up at Schooly Swarm. So Schooly Swarm, you right. and you did get and you did uh photos for two of the events and then we just got to hang out at Schooly Swarm, which is fun. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a blast. Yeah, really yeah actually that, those were all the um, um Van Fest was my first event ever. Um I was on the road and wondering if anybody else was there in Florida. And I found Van Fest. I went there and I met you and I met oh man. 50 people. And they're all like, are you going to this one? Are you going to this one? Are you going to this? I'm like, sure. So I just registered for everything and just went for it. So yeah. Okay. My introduction to uh, nomadic life and van life and all of that and all you crazy people on the road. So guys, I got to tell you, this is Gary's first year, first, first real big trip in an RV. So mm -hmm. you, we can tell you're an RV. So let's just talk about real quick. What kind of RV do you own? So I'm in a Forest River Sunseeker. It's a 2003 um, longer, little bit of a story. My mom bought this about 12 years ago and a week after she bought it, she died in a car accident, which mm -hmm. was sad and tragic. And we had to go through the whole process of who gets what and, um, and all that. And she had this huge trip plan that she and her, uh, her husband were going to take. And, uh, my brother got the RV and it's been sitting on his property in Texas for oh, 11 years. And I told him, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to get out of my full-time job and I'm going to hit the road and I'm looking to buy vans. And he goes, why don't you just take the RV? And I'm like, well, there's a good idea. The engine had 21,000 miles on it. So it's a wow. 20 year old rig, but it only had 21,000 miles on the engine. So he kept good, good um, shape. The engine's in pretty good shape. He took good care of it. Um, and the body's old, you know, but it's, it's in pretty decent condition. So I thought I'm going to give it a try. I hit the road December 4th and I was just calculating that. I've been on the road over four months and I'm loving it. I'm not even ready to go back home yet. So uh, <laughs> now the advantage of this is that it has a queen size uh, setup for a mattress. So I just took my Tempur-Pedic straight out of my bedroom and put it right back in here. So I don't have one of those RV springy pokey mattresses. This is legit the thing I sleep on at home. So when I close my eyes, I don't feel like I'm in any other place than my own bedroom. That's awesome. That's really cool. I'm I'm just, I'm so happy for you. I got to tell you, because it could have gone one way or another. It could have been like, yeah, I tried it. It wasn't that great, but you're just loving life. You're having a great time. An on another cool thing is today. So I just, I just drove into my hometown where I grew up today. I hit 10,000 miles for the trip too. Cool. So I, uh, I left the house. So I, I got it from my brother in Texas with 21 something thousand on it. I got home in Spokane with 24 seven and I just hit 34 seven today. Wow. Wow. That's, that's huge. That's a big deal. That's a, that's an yeah. awesome thing. All right. Yeah. So I want, I want to talk about being a mobile photographer. So you've been on the road, but yep. what are some cool things about being a photographer on the road? Uh, people that's been the big thing. I mean, there's lots of cool things to see, you know, you go to Florida and there's palm trees and there's beaches and you go to Louisiana and there's swamps and alligators and, and sunsets everywhere and all that. 
but I'm, I'm really fascinated by people and their passions. And that's why VanFest was so cool because I'm meeting all these people who love to travel and love to explore and love to do it differently. You know, they don't want to necessarily hop in a cruise ship or go to, uh, you know, some kind of resort or whatever. They, they want to go see the world in a different way and ex- I, I guess stay in places long enough to, to know the, the area as opposed to just stop by, buy a bumper sticker and T-shirt and, and leave. Um, but people, people are what fascinates me. People um, at events and fairs and, um, you know, people that are into photography or into travel or into, mm-hmm. and you name it. I went to a Scrabble tournament. I mean, these people were into Scrabble like I've never seen before. Fire, right? That was a fascinating uh, evening of fire dancing and just that whole kind of a um, thing. And they're all, those are all young people because they're all fit and they can whip these things around and not burn themselves. Um, but yeah, that's been that's been what's driven me mostly. And then events, trying to hit someplace interesting in a certain time, which was the eclipse. You know, that really was supposed to be the end of the trip. But I've loved this so much that I've done that, and I'm still not in a big hurry to to get myself quite back home yet. Although I, I do have to get somebody to mow my front lawn so it doesn't you know put off the neighbors. That's true. Okay, so let's talk about this eclipse because. I'm very jealous. And you had, it looks like the most amazing time. And these pictures are, are phenomenal. So tell me, how did you, how were you able to take this photo? Um, so uh, just, so I, I did a little research. NASA has a page with all the recommended exposures and when and how to shoot it and all that kind of stuff. So I, I, I actually wrote out a whole script because I've never photographed an eclipse before. So I had, you know, five minutes before do this, two minutes before do this. Um, this particular shot is taken with uh, without the filter. So prior to it, you have to have a, a pretty thick neutral density filter on it. Otherwise, it'll burn out your, your eyes and it'll burn mm-hmm. out the uh, elements in the camera. Um, but just before it goes completely black, you can catch this thing, which is is called the diamond. And it's kind of hard to see, but it's basically a little sparkle. It's got a kind of a sparkle, like a diamond ring. And then there's the Bailey's beads, which are basically the sun showing through and around the craters of the moon. And then there's solar flares, which I didn't expect and didn't realize. And I was trying to figure out why I had these little red things on my picture. And I looked closely. I went, wow. So that was, um, you got about a one or two seconds to catch this. And then it goes to the Corona. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have, and this was, a, I had four minutes, four, yeah, four minutes and 10 seconds of totality. So I had a chance to take some of the Corona, um, get a couple shots of just sort of the general area, wide angle. Um, and then I tried to put the tele, telephoto lens back on and get a few more shots. And that's actually my biggest regret. I should have just stopped with that shot right there and just been done and and enjoyed the last minute. But I tried to put a lens on and tried to check something. And I looked up and I had about five seconds left and I thought I just stopped, took it all in. um, And uh, yeah, so I guess the rest is four minutes of history. That's it's amazing though. I'm telling you, it's, it's a fantastic thing. I, I mean, I was, I was going through your photos. I was like, I was so jealous, but I mean, look at that. Look at that. It's amazing too. It's just in the middle of a football field. Well, I was I was off in a football practice field, but um, but it was cool to see it there because I did go there. Right. It's been thirty long time since I've been back in the, on the campus. And then okay. this was my favorite part was wandering around getting people right. I love this. Yep, I love these. I mean, I'm all about the people because I'm looking at the expressions going. You know, these are the people experiencing it. Okay, talk about these guys because these guys look like they were living their best life. Look at these uh, telescopes. Yeah. And in fact, everybody I talked to that had, I mean, this guy actually had kind of a small setup. There were people with like a 11 and 12 and $1,500 tracking tripods and cameras and multiple cameras and pulling it straight into video and live streaming. And everybody I talked to, it's a hobby. There were no pros out there at all. In fact, most of them didn't even have anything online. They're like, yeah, I just posted on this astronomy site here and there. So these were people that I'm looking for, the people that have this passion for something and they don't care about making a living at it. They just wanted to get there. People from Maine, people from Oregon, people from all over that came all the way to this particular spot for this purpose. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, Lucretia said it was overcast here in Eugene, Oregon. I bet it was. It was overcast where I was too, quite honestly. And I would have been Ron, in Spokane and it was overcast there and it wouldn't have been totality either, but yeah. Yeah. And Ron Darrell's like, wow, a lot of people are like very cool pics, you know, beautiful yeah. photos. Absolutely. He does a fantastic, and she's like, oh my gosh, those cameras, those cameras look like a pro. Oh yeah. Well, oh, 
yeah. I, I walked around with a lot of lens envy. Believe me, I thought I had a decent lens set up and I'm looking around going, wow, there were some big lenses like this guy. I actually, I wish I'd gotten a shot of the, I have a shot, a different picture of the full lens he has, mm -hmm. but he can get in on just like a quarter segment of the, of the sun. That's amazing. So cool. So cool. And I love the kids. Oh my gosh. It's like, you'll, they'll look and go, wait, oh, this, this is still one of my favorite pictures. I don't know why I love this. Because... <laughs> that you know, I, I, looked at him, I looked at him laying there and I thought, well, I can't see his face. I can't see his eyes. And I thought, wait a minute, this is just epically cool. This is how somebody chose to enjoy the eclipse. And he didn't move for like half an hour. He just took it all in and watched the whole transition to totality and then back out again. That's so cool. Okay. Um, no, we, the pictures were not taken in Spokane. He's from Spokane, but the pictures were been taken in Illinois. So, yeah. yeah. They were yeah. taken in Carbondale, Illinois. So Southern Illinois, which happens to be the place in 2017 that also had a total eclipse. So they're considered, they're calling themselves the, the ecliptical crossroads, you know, because they've had two in five years, which is like about a one in a billion chance. Um, so it's pretty, pretty rare to, to be in that specific spot. Now I was planning on going down to Southern Texas. That's mm. historically was supposed to be better weather. But I have a buddy in Tulsa and I hung out at his place for several days leading up to this. And this is the cool thing about being mobile is that I could just sit there and I kept watching the weather in Texas and up north and trying to decide where to go. And finally, since I, I had gone to school here, I decided this would be a good place to go. And it was two days before. and I thought, OK, there I'm committing and I'm going for it. And I'm glad I did. If I had booked a ticket or had a hotel reservation, I would have lost money or gone someplace and been disappointed. So um, I love being mobile. Yeah, it's really cool. Jai says, uh, I guess the bandana is so he doesn't get sunburned. That's why I would be using the bandana too. That's what I'm saying. It's fantastic. Yep. So apparently um, you have to watch the eclipse barefoot. Is that the deal? I want to make sure by this picture. Looks like no one had <laughs> shoes on. I was barefoot too. It was just comfortable and it was beautiful grass and lawn. I, I wouldn't advise that in Texas though. You know, it's probably, it's a little rougher and they have those burrs in the grass. <laughs> fire ants, you know, things like that. Yeah, or, you know, like we got the fire ants things. Yeah. This guy, I love his hat. Oh my gosh. This was just so cool. He's just absolutely intense he is there was some there were some characters there there was some really amazing people okay get bear said oh thank you that's amazing i'm northwest in canada so we saw only saw 23 percent coverage if you can find your way someday to a hundred percent a hundred percent is a thousand percent better than 99 percent. 99 percent there's still sun you can't look at it directly but as soon as it goes to a hundred the whole field changes. If you can get your way to 100% sometime, absolutely do it. It yeah, is absolutely. easily one or one of the most amazing experiences of my life. I just think it's great how all these hobbyists are out there and they're they're looking at things and going. I think that was just fantastic. All the gear that they have. Okay, now who's this guy? He looks familiar. <laughs> so I just so after the eclipse had base it passed totality. I just started wandering around, and they, they had this big event in the stadium where you could pay money to go in. And I'm I'm a little bit cheap when I travel, so I'm like eh, I'll just I'll, I'll pay for parking, but I'll just go out in the field. Well, I just walked into the stadium afterwards. Everything was wide open, and there was a mic and a couple of cameras set up. And I thought, huh, wonder if somebody's going to come up and do this. And heard the announcement, just or not announced, but one of the camera guys is like, okay, we got like one minute, and he's walking in now. I thought, huh, I wonder who this is. That's the, the governor of Illinois. He walked oh. in and he did a little kind of presentation or not presentation, but a little, you know, wow, right. it's amazing being in Southern Illinois and here's the eclipse. And then he did an interview and, and off he left. So I just happened to be standing right there. So it was random Definitely. chance, which is the fun part again about being a photographer and being mobile. You just find yourself ending up in places where you meet fascinating people, or in this case, see somebody interesting. That's really cool, though. That is really cool. I was going to say, you just you never know where you're going to be. I've got a friend here from Scotland, Jerry Boy. Hey, good to see you, buddy. We're talking about the eclipse. I'm with my friend here, Gary Rice Photography. It's a fantastic Instagram. You guys should check him out. Uh, we ended up having going to three uh, events or being being the same place at the same time, uh, three different events, which is really cool this past year. So it's really nice when you can meet great photographers who are capturing moments that you really, um, you know, it's it's just people appreciate great photography. And I'm definitely one of those people. Yeah, me too. A lot of the people I'm following are just all sorts of photographers from around the world. I love seeing what they do. It inspires me, motivates yeah. me. And John, John said, of course, there are unusual people there. It's a college town. True. 
true. <laughs> it definitely is. Well, the funny thing is, since I, I went to school here, so I had to, you know, relive a little few of the moments. And I, I went walking up and down the strip and I went to each of the bars that I used to kind of hang out at a little bit when I was here. 80% of the people in the bars were my age and older. I think all of us alums were coming back and we're in our, our you know, we're kind of roaming around, kind of reliving our days like, yeah, let's go here and have a beer. And I don't think, I think the college students were hiding this weekend from us. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure. Absolutely. Hey, um, let me know real quick as we're going through this, let me stop sharing for two seconds here because I, like I said, I just, I love your photography. Um, is there anything coming up that you're going to be taking pictures of? What's, what's your next step? Where are you going next? Um, you know, I, I, um, I'm supposed to go home and the supposed to part was my own deadline. Um, at this point, uh, I don't have anything set in the next month or so. I want to, I want to kind of take my time, get back home and figure out what I'm going to do. You know, uh, I, my first thought when I got to VanFest was, oh yeah, I'm going to go sell everything. I'm going on the road full time. And then I talked to a couple people, you know, you included, and you're like, you know, being on the road is awesome and it's exciting, but don't let the first couple of months or your first experience cause you to dive in so deeply that you may regret it later. So I'm going to go back and find out about renting the house and some other options. And I'd like to be back on the road in June, July. Um, it'd be fun. I mean, I'm in Spokane. It'd be fun to go down some of the Oregon coast and uh, into California. Um, several people I've met on this side of the country want to, are going to be over there. And mm -hmm. so that wouldn't that be fun to connect with them? And, and uh, yeah, I don't know. And I've never been on the East coast, Maine and Maryland and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Those are all States that are on my list still. Uh, so that would be kind of cool to work my way back over at the end of the summer and into the fall and then go back down and go South. And I, I loved Florida in the, in the winter. Uh, I don't oh, think yeah. I'm going to like it too much in the summer. So I'm going to no. no, no, no. But yeah, it's, I was going to say, and there are some really cool meetups right now in the Oregon yep. area. I mean, we have something called O20, O24 now. There's a big Oregon meetup that they have at a nice park. Um, there's a few other things going on that's really not nice in the Northwest that are some nice hangouts. So like when you get back there, you can check them out and meet some more. Oh, yeah. Meet some more friends that are actually in the chat because I know Absolutely. Brene is here and Lucretia. You know, there's other people that go to these yeah. things. It's a lot of fun. Well, let's all caravan to Scotland too. I mean, is there a bridge or something? Man, we should get over there. Yeah, Jerry Boy, we're coming over. Just uh, make up the couch. We'll be there. We got to have room for Rosie because she apparently takes over the whole couch. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Well, Gary, thanks so much for being here. Um, we're dropping your link again. We're going to be uh, uh, rating Giants Jerry in just a second. I'm going to put you in the basement if you don't mind. There's milk of cookies down there. Just, uh, okay. you know, but yeah, wear your glasses. Just, just so you're, you you're careful. You okay? Okay. <laughs> all right, here you go. <laughs> He's so funny. I'm so glad he's here, though, because I wanted to introduce you guys to an amazing photographer. And it's just it doesn't happen all the time that we get to uh, see people as we travel. And then here we go. Get her, maybe we can hire a cargo ship to Scotland. I don't know. What a great idea. I'm totally down with that. Maybe we can charter a boat. We drive the crew nuts. <laughs> That's fine. We'll have an adventure because every day is an adventure. Right, Johnny? I'm, I'm down with that. I think it's perfect. Uh, my friends in Scotland right now. There we go. Perfect. That's what we're gonna do. Well, we'll just look for boats. Lucretia, you're 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 gonna uh, you know you. I might put you in charge of this. Broken Nomad's It's like I'm in for Scotland. I'm just saying, bring out the kilts, guys. Scotland says kilts. That's all all I'm saying. Um, want to say thank you once again. We're gonna be rating Johnny's Journey. If you guys don't know, if someone could drop a link for Johnny's Journey's channel, um, that would be fantastic. I would appreciate that. And uh, before we do that, I'm gonna say once again, thank you so much for being here. If it's your first time please like and subscribe. Hit that bell to get notified. We're going to be here every Tuesday for Travel Tip Tuesday. We're going to share our stories, share our journeys, interview some interesting people, learn about their journeys and some of their tips while they're out there. And, uh, you know, just be a part of our awesome community. So until that time, once again, we say thank you to my members and we'll see you next time. Bye.